Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sailrite. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make flags. We're going to show you the most practical way to, to make flags. There are basically two ways we're going to show. One way is like this on uh, 200D nylon fabric. We have an emblem on this side and on this side, and it's mirrored, and it flutters beautifully in the wind. And then this has an emblem on this side and this side that is not mirrored. This is non-mirrored material, so you could have words or so forth. It uses two layers of 200D nylon and a blackout fabric, so you can't see through it, even in the sun. And then if you have a base material that is not just so a solid color like this one is white, we're going to show you how to create a seam with uh, a folded edge here and a folded edge on the back side. So let's get started and show you how to make flags in two different ways and hopefully you'll save money by doing it yourself. In this first chapter we'll be cutting our fabric to size. I'm using a nylon 200D fabric uh, for our, our base material and this isn't a white. We have other colors available at Sayerite and I marked it to size. We're making a finished size of 36 inches by 60 inches and I'm just cutting it with scissors. Now we need to add a hem to the long side at the trailing edge of the flag that is 1.25. So 60 plus 1.25 and on the 36 inch size we need to add it at the top and the bottom 1.25 on each side. So we add two and a half inches to that size. So the fabric over here, this is the nylon 200D and you can see it'll flutter beautifully in the wind, but it is rather thin. You can actually see my fingers on the back side of it. This one is the 400D and it'll still flutter, but it's a little bit heavier. You can uh, choose the fabric of your choice. This one would probably last a little bit longer, but typically flags are not meant to last more than a few months, six months at max. Uh, because the sun eventually and the wind eventually tear them apart. So it's your choice for backing. In this chapter, we'll be tracing and pinning our emblem to our nylon 200D. So this is the object that we're making for our flag. This will sit on top of our white fabric. And we're going to make a mirrored flag. So we're going to have this on the uh, front side and the back side. We'll take our object, hopefully you have an object like this or you can make an object, and we're going to use a scribe all white and mark our material uh, with this pattern. So as you can see, the scribe all pencil marks this dark uh, nylon fabric beautifully. We have it in white and black. Now we want to cut and be approximately uh, one inch outside of all of our lines. We do not want to cut on the lines yet because it's very difficult to get this to sit flat. It's a lot easier to sew this on in one piece. And we need a second piece to go on the back side of approximately the same size. We could have folded this in half and just cut it twice, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it over and I'm going to cut a second piece approximately the same size. So this is kind of a 3D object. It's amazing what you can trace for a flag. So if, if I do this and go around it like that, this actually makes a really nice uh, Object. So don't think, feel like you have to have something that's for, put out on the computer or something that's flat. As you can see, that would make a really nice flag as well. So you can see I have one that's marked. This one is not marked at all. There's no right side or wrong side to this fabric, and it's about the same size. So now we're going to take our base fabric and lay it out. So I have the one that's got the drawing on the top side. We're going to put this one on the underside with our base in the middle, and we will position it exactly where this one is resting, but first we need to determine where do we want this logo on our white uh, base fabric. Okay, so I have this one in the position I like it. It's basically centered and you can see the one on the bottom is roughly in, right in the same spot and I want to pin it. I don't want to pin where I'm going to be sewing and I am going to be sewing uh, basically on those lines. So uh, unfortunately this is going to take a lot of pins. Um, because we don't want it to move around when we're sewing and we can't really use double-sided tape because the double-sided tape will um, actually stick so well to the, uh, the nylon it's incredible and we're not sure that we could get it in the right spot. 
Now, the reason I don't cut this out is because it's so much easier to sew it as a big piece and then cut around it after we're done sewing. So I'm going to pin it all over uh, close to these things and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. So I think I have the appropriate number of pins to hold it in place and you should make sure that you're always uh, pinning through the one on the bottom as well. Uh, we are ready. Coming up, we'll be sewing our implement place. When you're sewing a light fabric like this, you need to check it out with the exact amount of layers you're going to be sewing through. And I'm going to be sewing through uh, these three layers. So we need to set up uh, tension. I'm using a V30 thread or a Tex 30 to 35 uh, thread and it's polyester. And we have reduced the stitch length to almost neutral and we've put it in a zigzag that's about three millimeters. Um, and uh, this is a, a pretty good stitch length for sewing logos on flags. What we want to check is we want to see what the stitch tension looks like. So there I can see a little bit of the thread being pulled up on the, each side of the zig, which means I need to reduce this by probably a half turn. So always test it out before you start sewing your flag. We're using a number 10 needle with this Tex 30 or Tex 35 thread polyester from Sailrite. That looks perfect right there and it's nice and tight. And the back side back here looks good even though I caught one of my trailer threads. So this is perfect. Okay, the most important thing is to keep this excess fabric from being sewed under. So that's all you got to really pay attention to. No need to do any reversing. We're just going to sew right over that white line and try to follow it to the best of our ability. And when we get to the straightaway, we can go pretty fast. Now, I could either stop here, but I think I'm going to actually turn and just go around the outside like this. This is all that's needed. Do you have to be exactly precise? No, not really. So we're going to do this around the entire perimeter. And even for that cutout in the center of the needle eye, we're going to uh, sew around that as well. So you can see that having a short stitch length basically makes our sewing time much longer, but this short stitch length will prevent the fabric from unraveling when we cut next to the stitch in the, in the next step. Now sometimes when you come to a 90 degree turn, which is this is almost 90 degrees, what I like to do is I like to bury my needle, lift my foot, and pivot on the buried needle. Just make sure you lower your foot before you start sewing again. So there we go. Now make sure there's no fabric underneath there. Okay, when I get to sections like this where I have to skip over to this part, again, I'm not doing any reversing. I'm basically just gonna lift my foot and then I'm gonna pit, move over there without even cutting my threads and sew this portion. We're going to remove the pins and hopefully this side, oh yeah, and this side is secured down well and it looks like it is. We'll show you what's next. Okay, this is the most time consuming part of the job and that is to cut really close to your stitches without cutting your base fabric. Um, sure, there's going to be a little bit of unraveling because this is a nylon fabric, but those tight zigzag stitches that we made should stop that from happening. So we're going to go close to the stitch, but not so close that we cut into the stitch. Uh, the closer you go, the better, but just definitely don't cut your uh, stitches if you can avoid it. And we're going to do this to both sides, and we'll show you what's next. Now, the important part of doing this is to have a good pair of scissors, nice and sharp. Um, if you're going to do a lot of flags, just designate a pair of scissors uh, for doing this alone and nothing else. When it comes time to cut out sections that are in the center of a hole, you can often grab the material and you can roll it between your uh, thumb and forefinger and then you can take a seam ripper and poke through and that way you, you're, you know you're not going to get the white 
and there you go. You got a hole so you can now insert your scissors and start cutting around there. In this chapter, we'll be sewing our hems. So here is our um, emblem sewing onto the white base fabric, which you can choose any color you want. And here it is on the other side. So it is mirrored. In other words, this is the direction it'll go like this. And if it were this way, you would see it like that. So what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is if you have letters or if you have a logo that has to go a specific direction, you'll need to make the flag a little bit differently. We're gonna show a second way that you can make a flag with an image that cannot be mirrored like this, a non-mirrored image. In other words, if you have letters or if you have something that can't be flipped like that. Uh, so that's coming up soon. But we need, need to finish the edges of this flag and so that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so on this side, we're gonna put a flag tape on. This basically just encompasses this side. Uh, so we'll do a single hem here. On these edges, this top edge, the outside edge, and the bottom edge, we're gonna do a double hem. We're not gonna baste it, we're not gonna pre-fold it, we're gonna take it straight to the sewing machine. So we're gonna sew this edge, this edge, and this edge with a double hem, and we're not gonna do anything with this one right now. Since we're doing a double hem, I'm gonna fold some scrap material because we want a, a test for tension again. Three layers, which is a double hem, and we'll put it under the foot. Now I've changed the thread in the needle uh, to an upholstery thread, uh, which is like a size v V69 or a text uh, 70. We're gonna go to straight stitch. We're gonna go to about four to five millimeters in straight stitch. We're gonna put the needle in the center and I'm gonna put the reverse in about the same. So let's uh, test our uh, tension. So we don't want too much tension that we cause any puckering. And the knot is on the bottom side, so that is about as minimal as we can make it. I'd rather have the knot on the bottom side a little bit than the top side, um, so we're ready to go. Okay, so if you'd like, you can pin this, but I typically don't. I usually just fold it over once, about a half inch, and then fold it over again, like that, and I kind of pull on my seams like this, and then I put it in here, and I want to sew close to this raw edge, so I'll put the foot down here, and I'll move my needle to the left so that I'm close to that. Okay, so if I hold it like that, and I sew, while I'm applying pressure here, it'll keep that fold. Okay, when I get to where my finger is, I'll bury my needle, then I'll uh, position the fabric by doing that same thing again to create a similar fold again. So we just do that, it's a double fold, it looks to be about the same, I hold my finger here, and so. And check again. Now, why do we want the knot on the bottom side? Some people may be asking that because if the knot's on the bottom side, you'll have less puckering because if you have too much tension with light fabrics, you'll get more puckering. So you want it looser than you do tighter. Okay, we're going to keep doing this until we get to the about six inches from the other end and I'll show you what I do to transition to the next side. If you're getting puckering in the fabric, sometimes a little trick is to actually grab the fabric like this between your thumb and your forefinger and pull a little bit while you're applying pressure from the front and kind of pull the fabric as the machine feeds it. And that actually reduces some of the uh, natural puckering in light fabrics. Okay, so we are approximately about six inches from the transition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my needle buried I'm going to actually finish this up, but I'm going to create the double fold on this side before I get to it. So one fold, two fold, about equal to this one. So now we have a corner that I can pivot on. So watch what we do here. So don't sew your finger. Okay, and I need to go in reverse, one 
unstitch, right? I want to bury this. I, I shouldn't have gone backwards, but I did. And so I'm going to turn this around. And now we can sew down this side in the same manner um, just by folding the fabric, making it look like about the same size. Make sure you lower your foot. And there we go. Okay, so we have our double hem around the pr perimeter. Now I'm going to sew an outside stitch. You don't have to do this, but I do recommend it. So I'm going to put this toe right along our, the outside of this foot, and I'm going to follow the stitches. And I'm going to put the needle in center position to get a little bit closer to that edge. Because this edge will be fairly straight, but it's not going to be perfect because I didn't pre-fold it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just going to go around the perimeter doing this. I'll probably pull on the back of it like I showed you. We're going to go around these three sides doing this and that'll be two stitches. Okay, so this is the edge that's going to have the tape on it. So I'm going to just fold it over. So I'm going through two layers of fabric and I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch down it. Um, no need to do any reversing. This is basically a tacking stitch just to hold it in place. So we're going to uh, create this stitch. Um, creating a half inch single hem. When I can grab the fabric, I'm going to do so. There we go. So let's just create this and then we'll show you what's next. Next up, adding flag tape. Okay, so this is our, our uh, tape and you can see it's folded already. It's pretty cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this back about uh, Three quarter of an inch or to an inch, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to actually put the flag inside of that. I'm not going to go all the way to the fold. I'm actually going to just be close to that fold. And uh, we have two different size tapes. I believe this is a smaller one. Okay, we're going to put this in the machine and I'm going to sew across here. And this time I'm going to do some reversing. Good. Got that in sewn up. We'll cut the threads. And then now we're going to put this in by turning it around and putting it in that same location, which is just shy of the center intentionally. So I can kind of see through this material. You can see that uh, we're lined up nicely. We'll fold this over. Then I'm going to move my needle to the left to get closer to that edge. And I want to do some reversing here. Okay, we're going to do two stitches on this. So if you're not in your hem, don't worry about it. You will be in your hem on the second stitch. So you can pin this in advance if you'd like, or you can just take it to the machine and do, do what I'm doing, checking to see where it's at, holding it together and then sewing. Okay, so we're coming close to the end. We want to cut the tape so that we can create a hem here and just go about uh, three quarter of an inch or so. And then we can fold this back before we get there. Let's just lay this flat. Like that. And then you can tuck the end of the flag in there and make it look nice. You can be as particular about this as you want. Something like that. So we're going to come to that edge. I'm going to bury my needle close to that edge. The needle going to be coming up. I'm going to lift my foot, I'm going to turn this around, and I'm going to sew this direction. And I'm going to hopefully keep my hand out of the camera's way and do some reversing. That's probably too much reversing, but hey, we got the job done. Now I'm going to put one more stitch down it, so we're going to go back up to the top here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this in the machine, <coughs> and I'm going to have it uh, be about that far. So I'm going to put the magnetic guide on here because my hem stops. I, I held this up to the light. My hem stops right there, short of the edge. 
So I'm sewing through that right now. So I'm reversing and we'll just stay up against the magnetic guide and sew all the way down the side. Do reversing at the end. In this next chapter, we'll be installing grommets. Okay, we're gonna install grommets in the edge of our flag and we're using the Sarit drill hole cutter set to punch a hole first. We're gonna put it in a number two grommet, so this is the number two hole cutter, and it just goes into a drill like this. You can use a spur grommet or you can use a common washer grommet. A common washer grommet is uh, one that doesn't, uh, is not as strong as a spur grommet. We're using a spur grommet just because we have them available and we'll put it uh, close to the corner here. So we'll just use this with a cutting pad on the bottom side. Put, puts a hole in our material. All the past cuttings come out of the uh, hole cutter, which is nice, it cleans itself. We'll put the uh, male portion of the grommet through, and then we use a die set, and we put the female with the teeth. That's the difference between a spur grommet and a common washer grommet. The common washer grommet does not have teeth. We give it a few blows with a mallet or a hammer. Mallets always look a little bit better. And all you're trying to do is sink everything down there and it looks like it needs a few more. There we go. We're gonna do the same thing to the other corner. Coming up, we'll show you how to seam base panels together. Okay, if you have a base fabric that's not just one color, this is our 400D instead of the 200D nylon. What you would do is you'd take that secondary color and you would lay it on top of this fabric and you would uh, create a half inch fold here and then sew this. So let's take it to the machine and sew this. So here's where we folded the fabric back approximately half inch. This is in, into that fold. And we're gonna sew close to that raw edge. So my needle's in the left position and just tuck this into the fold that we created. Okay, once that's done, we'll take this and we'll splay it open and we will fold it back this direction. And we pull on that um, fabric so that it's on that first stitch. And we sit on this side close to that folded edge now. And what this does is it gives us a finished fold on the top side and the bottom side. One stitch on one side, two stitches on the other. I'll show you. So as you can see, we have a nice fold here, finished. And on this side, we have a fold here, and it's finished. One stitch on this side, two stitches on this. In this chapter, we'll show you how to make a double-sided flag. So this is the one we've finished with the mirrored image. And uh, you can see it's backwards on this side. Now we're going to show you how to do one without a mirrored image. So what we've done is we've done a different uh, emblem here and sewed it on just like we did for the other one. And we did it on two pieces of fabric. Uh, and if you lay this wrong side up and this one outside, you can see that when you look through it, it doesn't look that great because you can see the anchor goes the other direction. So think of this being text or words or something like that. You want them to be like this, but you don't want to see through it. So what we do is we put outside surfaces of the flags facing each other like that, and you can see that they are not directly over top of each other like they are with the other flag. And then we've cut the exact same size of blackout material that's available from Sayerite, and we lay it over the top. Now I'm gonna pin it in place so that everything stays lined up. We'll just pin a little bit away from the edges at all four corners. Now if your flag's bigger, you may wanna pin it at uh, some other spots as well, but this is a really small one. So we'll do that to all four corners. Okay, so there's what we have. This is our flag side, this is our blackout fabric. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sew. Now you gotta decide which side you want the tape on. We're gonna put it on this side. So we're gonna sew here, here, and here. We're gonna create a pillow and we're not gonna sew this side. 
We're going to put our magnetic guide at a half inch, and you can see it here on the needle plate of the Alterfeet LSC sewing machine. We're in a straight stitch, and we're sewing the uh, upholstery thread. We want to put the needle in center position so that we're a half inch from the raw edge. And uh, we want to do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning. Just keep your fabric up against the edge as you sew. When you get to approximately a half inch from this corner, bury the needle with the needle coming up slightly, lift your foot, pivot on that buried needle, lower your foot, sew down this side. No need, reason to do any reversing there. This, I'm gonna pull that needle out so I can get that little air bubble to come out. And we'll do the same thing here. Needle coming up slightly, pivot on that spot, sew down the side. When we get to the end, we'll do some reversing. Now don't worry if your fabric's a little bit off. Just try to keep it going nice and straight. We tried to cut these at the same size, but as you can see, one's a little bit different than the other. When we get to the end, reverse. Okay, so now we have our pillow sewing. Pull the pins. Okay, so now, since we have this reversed, it's not gonna pull out the stitches. We wanna turn this right side out. So just put our hand in here between the two uh, sewing flags, and it's pretty easy to do. And push the corners out with your finger or a tool. Depending on the size of the flag, it's not too hard. Even if the corners are a little bit, uh, uh, what should I say, not square, that's fine. It's a flag, it doesn't have to be perfect. So there we go. And now you can see, you can see our logo on this side and our logo on this side. And with the blackout fabric, you cannot see through it at all, even in the sun. So what we want to do now is we want to fold the fabric. I'm going to put my hand inside right along that stitch and uh, crease it. And I'm just going to crease it with my hand because we want to be on that stitch. And see, if even if I have a corner like this, what I would do is I'd sew here and I'd follow that curve, but I'm going to poke that out. So I'm using a screwdriver to poke that corner out, and that's pretty good. So right like that. And now we're going to do a top stitch all around the perimeter, not doing this side. All right, so we're back to the machine, and we want to be on that first stitch. So we're folded on that. I'm going to lower my foot. I'm going to move my needle to the right because I want to be really close to that uh, edge. And I am going to sew. And I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here. Not, not a lot because we're going to have a tape on that side. And I am going to pull the fabric from behind and in front so that I can kind of keep it on that stitch. Uh oh, see, I've got some scrap fabric on the inside. That's going to be there forever. I want to try to get that out because you might see that. So any colored remnants should be removed. Any dirt from the inside, there's a little dirt there, but I'm going to leave it in. So when we get to the corner, Now that corner is not perfectly square. I don't care. I'm going to bury my needle, come up a little bit, lift my foot. I'm just going to follow that curve. I think it actually looks better. And then I'm going to use the reverse lever to bury my needle. Needle comes up a little bit because I, if I wouldn't have used the reverse lever, it would have fallen off the edge. Sew down this side. And we're going to do the same thing to the opposite side. So this is the tape. We're just going to cut it oversized and we're going to put it on in the same method that we did with the other flag. Uh, you've already seen that, so we'll just come back to the table after I've, after I've got it on. The only difference to this flag is that I've got uh, two layers of the 200D and I have the blackout fabric, so there's no reason to do a single hem here. We'll just lay it close to this and uh, sew it in uh, so it's not right at the fold. You don't have to reinforce this. So this is the flag that is mirrored, nice and light, will flutter beautifully in the wind. This is the flag that is not mirrored and it has a blackout fabric on, on it, but it is a little bit stiffer since it has two layers of two, 200D nylon and the blackout fabric, which is quite soft actually. If this were a bigger flag, it wouldn't be that bad, but it is definitely stiffer. Here's a look at our completed flag installed on a flagpole. And finally, a list of the materials and tools we use to complete this project. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email.
we're glad to help. From all of us here at Sailrite, I'm Seth Grant. Thanks for watching.